Big up Capish, big up on the cell, big up everybody watching. We outside. Um, yeah, so let me just do this while it's fresh on the mind, bro. Um, listen, I thought we were excellent tonight. I know everybody's gonna be disappointed, but we for me, we lost the game in the first leg. We cannot blame the performance tonight. I thought we were smoking tonight and it's one of our better performances without scoring a goal um, I thought Nat Phillips was excellent listen I thought most of the guys were excellent tonight and if we're judging performances based on tonight and not as a whole I thought everybody could leave with the held, their head held high so big up Liverpool team I, I thought they tried their best and sometimes you just have to give credit to the opposition bro Real Madrid defended brilliantly they hit the post that one time like listen we had two makeshift defense playing against each other and, and the, the goalkeepers I mean they hardly had stuff to do you know so I thought we were dominant just not clinical and yo we move man we have to push for the top four now so bye bye champions league and and we'll see you soon big up copish again we outside as always it's your boy d Madre. we out liverpool are out of the champions league 2021 competition and rightly so this team does not deserve to be in the semi-finals yeah they didn't want it enough. Sorry, but didn't want it enough. Sideways football. Ah, uh, again, I switched off after the first half. I just knew it. I just knew exactly what's gonna happen. And from the beginning, why wouldn't you start Jota? All right, the Thiago thing I can understand. Maybe, you know, if you want a game changer, maybe. But Jota, he's been banging goals for his country and for the whole season. He's the only guy, one of our main guys, who's been banging goals. And the out of form, Mane starts and Firmino because... Because why? I don't know. Please tell me. You know what? Klopp's got it wrong. Klopp's got this wrong. Uh, you can't even blame the defence. You can't because we didn't even concede. But you didn't even dominate. We had so many chances. So many chances. They just don't want to shoot the same sideways football. Guys, I can tell you what's going to happen with Leeds. Leeds going to bang us. Um, we're not going to get top four. Um, I didn't even want to talk about this because I've been waiting for next season. But yeah, really angry, frustrated, but over at the same time. Because from last week I knew we're not going to turn this around. No fans matters. The spine of the team broken, matters, out of form players, not wanting it enough, sideways football. Anyway guys, keep it good, keep it real. Yes, Coppish. Um, uh, yeah, again, thank you for including me. But yeah, tonight, mate, we had no right performance and I do want to put that out there defensively. We were brilliant. Like no, I wouldn't say brilliant. You know, we had a few errors here and there, but like to keep with the defense we have. Yeah, we have Phillips and um, Kabak, and everyone was saying, "Oh yeah, we can score the goal, but we can't keep the clean sheet." That wasn't the problem. We didn't concede. We kept the clean sheet. Yeah, but we couldn't score the goals. We created the chances, but we didn't finish them off. In my eyes, Jock could have been brought on early, but like even when he came on, no one was just finishing off these chances. Yeah. And like there was some brilliant performances, the brilliant individual performances, you know, people like Milner was good, was brilliant, you know, Wayne Alden brilliant, Salon, Firmino, Man at the front three, they created stuff, but they just didn't finish it off, and that's the problem. That's been the problem for the majority of the season. We just haven't finished things off, and mate, it's becoming a big problem. Um, hopefully we can get top four, but like uh, you know, we can take away that we got a decent performance there. Just not clinical enough at all, and we're gonna look back on them chances 
all over and over again, like that Salah one at the start, the Firmino one at the start. Oh, we're just going to keep looking back on them um, in our heads. I'm sure all Liverpool fans will, but, you know, this season's just a write-off now, isn't it? Like, just, we go again next season. Like, I don't want to hear, like, but, ah, there's people making quick judgments. Like, like, next season, yeah, players like Thiago is going to, like, Thiago's going to show his class, yeah. Like, you know, people are saying he's underperformed, he's a flop. He's going to show his class next season. Mark my words, yeah. And, um, yeah, I can just tell you. Yeah, I can just, you know, it, it takes time to settle in. If we play him in that double pivot with Fabinho, similar to how he was playing at Bayern, he'll show his class next season. Um, and I believe next season we could do something, but we need to improve in January because we need backups off the bench. Yeah, like, obviously you brought Jota on, but then after that, we brought, we had to bring Chamberlain on there. Yeah, we need to, we need someone else who you can bring off the bench. Yeah, um, we, we can bring on, like, you know, like, with, with City, yeah, we, if they have every player fit, yeah, they they can bring on Bernardo Silva on the bench, they could bring on Jesus off the bench, they can bring on, um, obviously, Guero, he's even now, they've got Aguero, you've got so many options, we need more options, yeah, um, like, we need just a striker who can come on, and you're like, you're like, right, he's going to score, that's similar how you feel with Jota at the minute, but we need two of them, Jota's obviously more of a wide player, but sometimes you need an out-and-out -out striker who can do that and can push for the starting eleven as well. Pat and Daka potentially, um, you know, he's a, he's been flying over there. Um, but yeah, um, I have a YouTube channel, Theo Woods LFC. Go subscribe for more content like this. Um, well, hopefully not like this. Hopefully in the future it's more positive based. Um, but yeah, thank you to Coppish, Team Coppish, having me on. Congrats on twenty k recently hit um yeah come on you reds like i know we'll bounce back from this season and um, it's only a matter of time we will be back um this season is just a write-off like you know we won the we won the champions league we won the premier league i'll take an off season from that and um, i know it's not ideal but like it is what it is we move on we live Liverpool. um at the end of the storm there's a golden sky um yeah i'm in the old lfc um, thank you to Coppish um, for um, having me on again and yeah, um, over now. Well there you go lads, 0-0 nil -nil against Real Madrid we go out of the Champions League by 3-1 to goal so I get, I'm just gutted because we had the chances there you know, to, to, to score a lot, a lot of goals, we just didn't take them I thought the first half was absolutely immense, I was just so nervous and, and you know, couldn't cope to watch it it was like the Liverpool of old, you know in a way just trying to score goals you know, Mane, I thought Mane was you know, I thought Mane was um back to his old self in the first half, but I think in the second half he just sort of like died down and just like, you know, kind of the majority of Mane for the whole season has just been, you know, not good enough. And you know, it, it was like it was like this sort of way you thought of like we can actually do this. But I think Salah needs to finish that first chance in the you know, in the first chance he takes. That he just has to score that. So is White Adam, you know, you know, I thought first, half time I was like we can actually do this I think we can actually do this in the second half and I was like giving up the big at half time come on lads let's go I didn't see that we didn't we were creating chances but like I don't know it just wasn't the same and like you know for me it's like oh uh, you know we could have given more we could have scored more goals why do we not take them chances I think the Fabrini really take that look at themselves you know what I mean especially Jota coming on and Thiago they should they should have done better than what they were doing but um. I think for me, it, this is going to have to be a wake-up call for the front three in terms of the, taking the chances because Leeds are coming on Monday and that's a huge... Every cup game, every game now is a, a final for me now in the top four race. We have to take these opportunities and um, we had, who knows where we'll end up. But yeah, just absolutely got it. You know, I mean, just um, could have done better and um, we move on to Leeds on Monday night and uh, over the top four, we'll still be on. So anyway, you never walk alone. Up to you in Right there, hello everyone, it's it's Klopp Talk TV on Team Coppish. Now, we are knocked out of the Champions League. It's it's not a good feeling. It's a tough pill to swallow, but it's just one of them games, I feel like. Um, we created loads of chances. Our defence was so much more solid. Alisson had a blind of a game. Uh, our midfield was good. Uh, really good performance all round from Genie, but we just couldn't finish, bro. It, we just couldn't finish and at the end of the day and it was just so frustrating to see I think uh, I can speak on every Liverpool fan we were all optimistic going into the game we all had that high hopes seeing obviously the pyrotechnics and with the bus walk it with the bus 
uh, entry. We're all getting our hopes up and for it all to go crashing down. Not so much crashing down, just slowly ebb away. I think it was really soul destroying in the end. And look, it's it's. It's a tough pill. It's a tough pill to swallow. I'm sure uh, every Liverpool fan tomorrow when they wake up um, in the morning will have that same feeling as me and that, that sort of down feeling. But, you know, we, we move. I think when you look at the the what we have, what what's at stake now for the league, I think you can write off this season. I think there's not much more we can compete for um, in terms of just getting that top four, getting Champions League, and look re- really look forward to next season. I feel like that's a big priority, uh, and if if we were we were to obviously cement that top four, which I think is more likely than usual, given the fact that Chelsea have progressed, they obviously have an FA Cup clash, which means that they could have their heart set on the FA Cup, which could have offered a distraction in the league. So you know all these things to play out in mind, but when you look at the the, the 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 game tonight I think the the way the reason we didn't go through I think was was partly due to the fact that we was taking too long to just get our shots away I feel like you just gotta touch hit or just hit it first time I think we were dilly dallying a bit in the box expecting space to open up and it just wouldn't work in the end so look it's I keep saying it. It's a tough pill to swallow, uh, but congratulations to Real Madrid. You know they they. I think that first half an hour over in Madrid really did kill us in the sense that we, you know, they, it gave us an, a really big task. But we didn't lose hope. I think a lot of Liverpool fans were optimistic, um, and yeah, look, it just wasn't meant to be. I think these things happen in football with this the way that we bounce back. I think Leeds is a massive game now. We gotta just put all eggs in one basket and it gives these players a little bit more rest and I'm sure it'll give these players a bit more time to re recuperate and focus on just getting this season done in a in a professional manner. Because I think if you get Europa League out this season as well as not winning the Champions League, um yeah, not going far in the domestic cup competitions as well. I think it's a very poor season, but you know, we got we just got to get get that top four, just fight with what fight for what we have left, and just 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 go for it. I feel like that's just the only aim. But um, pleasure to be on Team Coppish again. Smash the like, smash the subscribe. Go over to Crop Talk TV. It would mean a lot. We're so close to eight hundred subs. That would mean a lot if you go and hit that subscribe button. But yeah, like I said, see you soon. And you'll never walk alone. At the end of the storm, there's always a golden sky. Remember, ladies and gentlemen. That's how I'm a feeling right now. Deflated. Yes, yes, guys, it's yours and truly laser LFC. Liverpool have bombed out of the Champions League to Real Madrid. Nil-nil on the night, 3-1 on aggregate. Well, the damage was done in the first leg. That was obvious. We left ourselves a mountain to climb. It was going to be a tall order to get through. You know, it wasn't impossible. All we needed is two goals. But if our boys can find their shooting boots... We might be talking about a different story right now, you know, but it just wasn't meant to be. Now, Salah had a wonderful chance in the opening stages of the game in the first half. You know, a chance that normally he would convert. He should have converted it because I knew chances were going to be few and far between. And to be honest with you, we had way more chances than I even envisaged we were going to have anyway in that first half. You know, that was one of our best performances at Anfield, considering we had no fans there in a long time from us, man, because we all know the story. We've been terrible at Anfield this season. We struggled to break teams down, struggled to create chances. You know, but we had chances, man. We had a lot of chances. I thought that Mane had a better game tonight, you know, compared to his previous outings. He was making things happen in the first half, you know, down that left-hand side. Him and Robbo were working the Real Madrid defence. You know, I felt like Mane was... Back to his energetic self. Not the full manner that we know he can be. But he was working. He was doing a good job. You know what I mean? Um, for me, no. For me, he's lost that spark and that that drive. You know, that pressing that was there from, you know, previous years was non-existent tonight. You know, yes, he was trying to make things happen. But it wasn't enough, man. You know, there was a chance where 
it was in the first half. I can't remember who it was, but he could have put through someone through in on goal. All he had to do is slide him in with a perfect pass and nice weighted ball. But it's like he never put no power on it and it didn't reach um, the intended target. I think it might have been Salah on the right hand side. It was through the middle. I was like, come on, just slide him in. He could just see the picture happening and he never um, managed to get the pass right. It was like he got his brain mixed up with his feet. You know, for me, you no. Know, why, like, I don't know, man, if his days are over as um, a centre forward for Liverpool FC, man, because he's not doing the job, the required job as a goal scorer needs to do. You know, a centre forward is supposed to put the balls in the back of the net, and for the last 18 months, Firmino hasn't done the job. But I felt like Real Madrid defended so well. You know, Militao, some of their players, yeah, they put in a real good shift. Like, at one stage, I looked at the game and I thought, raw, like, Real Madrid, like, this ain't the Real Madrid you once knew, but to be honest with you, they've got a lot of injured players out. They didn't need to force the issue, guys. You know, I've stated this previously. They already had a two-goal buffer. You know, one goal for them, and it was more or less curtains for us. Do you know what I mean? They didn't need to force the issue. They just needed to just sit back and wait for their opportunity. But we did attack them well in the first half, and I felt like if that goal never came, I always said this, if we didn't score in the first half, for me, we're just going to leave ourselves more of a mountain to climb. Yes, I never gave up and I kept the faith because all it takes is two goals. Anything happens in football. You know, it only takes a second to score a goal. You know, we could get a goal on like, what, the 18th minute or something and we can get a penalty. So for me, I always wanted to remain positive. But the longer the game went, I thought, here we go. We're not going to get nothing from it. And it's sad, man, because we bummed out of the Champions League. The damage was done in the first half. That first half of the first leg, I should say, was horrendous. That's where the damage was done, guys. I'm not going to really um, blame the players tonight. Yes, a few players didn't um, play to the level required. Yeah, the standard required, I should say. But the damage was already done. You know, they gave it their all. They did what they could have done. And like we all know, if the Anfield support was there, we had our fan base there in the crowd. You know, the, the, the collodium it would have been in, the noise, the atmosphere, it would have been amazing. That was worthy of a tie where the fan base should have been there, the home support, and we were rubbed off that. You know, no fault of our own, you know, pandemic is just is what it is. We just have to just go again for next season. For me, the big thing is now Liverpool need to make sure they get fourth place in, in the league because we cannot afford, yeah, to finish outside of the top four, you know, and qualify for like, what is it, this year, Open Conference League. That's going to hinder us for the following campaign. But yeah, man, um... Back on the game, we now then was a little bit better today because I've been his critic of late. It was a bit better. I felt bringing in Milner was the right thing to do. I always stated this, you know, for leadership. You know, he's giving the captaincy because he's our vice captain. He gave a good account to himself. The only um, problem for me is when uh, Real Madrid had their transitions and it looked like they were breaking, he struggled to track back, which we know because he's, he hasn't got that energetic, you know, body and he hasn't got the legs to be going back tracking back and chasing players down like he once had it's not him anymore do you know what I mean if you notice when he does it he gives away fouls you know cynical fouls so I rate him for trying man I rate his effort you know his work ethic was good as well Phillips Phillips didn't do nothing wrong he had an amazing game especially in the air every ball that Real Madrid was trying to float over yeah he won all his aerial duels all his aerial battles getting his head to it. You can tell he loves heading in the ball. Man must have been doing that when he was a baby in his mum's womb because man loves heading in the ball. Boom! You know what I mean? Kabak was all right as well. I don't think our boys did anything wrong at the back line. Do you know what I'm saying? Trent had a good game, much better than previous games. You know what I mean? I think there was a, a time when, um, was it Vinicius? Tried to like dubs him up and um, near the byline and it looked like he was through. It may have been Vinicius. I can't remember who it exactly was, but he redeemed himself well, Trent, and he just got the ball and he managed to keep it in from going out for a corner. I thought, well played, Trent, man. Do you know what I mean? He, he, he done his job good tonight there, man. He was trying to get balls in, whipping balls in. Only the part for me, thing for me, I should say, was when it was late towards the end of the game, around about the last 10 minutes or so, he was forcing a lot of the balls. We were getting desperate then, searching for a goal. But I found that like when he brought a Jutta clap and he made the changes in the second half, we became disjointed and our shape just kind of changed then. And you could just see Real Madrid were comfortable. It was, it was like a blanket, a white blanket. And they just sat back, you know, they done their homework. They knew that we struggled to um, break teams down from our Premier League games. And it was just hard. It was just like, here we go again. It was just kind of like watching, you know, the last couple of um, months we was on that bad run. 
of trying to break teams down. And I just know thought, where's this goal going to come from? I just thought it's going to either be a tug in the box where Salah Walton, one of our players, go down, we get a penalty and get a break. That way, it was just we just left ourselves a mountain to climb. The goal should have came in the first half. Milner had a, a, a wonderful chance, but it was an excellent save by quarter. He had a very good game for Real Madrid. He was good in goal. And I think when now them had a chance where he should have done better, he should have done a lot better. And there was another one Salah had, but he couldn't quite get the ball from out of his feet, under his feet. And he went over the crossbar. But it just wasn't meant to be. It was just one of the things, no fairy tale. You know, and it's a shame we would have had Chelsea in the semi-finals. We'd have given ourselves a chance to get to the final in Stambel. Once again, 16 years later. It's just not meant to be. And it looks likely we might have an English team in the final. Because what I've seen today, yeah, Real Madrid were decent. They were a good team, especially in the first half. And a lot of it was down to, ah, you know, mistakes and um, errors, right? But if Man City were to play Real Madrid at this current moment, for me, Manchester City will wipe the floor with them. That's my opinion. They already done it to them last season. I think it was in the round of 16. And that's what scares me. I don't want to see Man City win the Champions League. So I think they've got PSG now in the semis. That would be a decent game still. But we're out of it, guys. Now we've just got to concentrate on the league campaign. I'll give the boys marks out of 10 for effort. I'll give them about an 8 out of 10. I think that's fair enough for me because there was effort there, especially in the first half. I was actually surprised. I thought they gave themselves a good, you know, it was a good account of themselves. A good, um, you know, they were working hard. You know, I seen desire in the players tonight. I did. I seen commitment. By the time the second half, the last 15 minutes, you can see the players started to get leggy. He brought on Axelide Chamberlain. He didn't really offer nothing. You know, to me, his days are numbered as a Liverpool player. There was a couple of times he tried to float balls in and they were going into space, into row Z, you know, for goal kicks and stuff like that. It didn't come off, you know. But yeah, man, the boys tried, man. It didn't come off. You know, we didn't lose the game. It was nil-nil, a draw, but we lost, you know, an aggregate. So we'll have to just go again. We've got Leeds United on the weekend in the Premier League. And we're going to have to, um, you know, away from home. So I'm quite happy with that. We've been good away from home recently. And just try our hardest now to salvage what the last remaining six games or so of the season and get ourselves in the top four with it's a goal difference by one point I do not care get in that top four close the book and wipe the slate clean and go again for next season but anyway big up all the Liverpool supporters it's your boy Mr Laser until the next time peace I'm out what's going on Kopish uh, this is my match review for the Real Madrid Second leg game at Anfield in which we drew 0-0. So I haven't done a review for a while, so it's good to be back. You know, I've uh, enjoyed a bit of time getting uh, getting to know some more, um, you know, Liverpool FC, uh, YouTube family members, this type of community. It's a great community, so, uh, you know, long may it continue. So we've uh, obviously drawn to Real Madrid 0-0 at Anfield. We are out of the Champions League, and it is bitterly disappointing uh the manner in which we went out, obviously, uh, was frustrating because we were better than Real Madrid on the night. The first half was a very strong, uh, well-executed plan, but we just didn't finish our chances. Salah had many chances during the game. Wijnaldum had a good chance. Firmino had good chances. And it's just the, the, it's the same old stuff. In the final third, we've been poor the whole season. Uh, we've got a... Liverpool players need to be more clinical. It's the, the, Every single... Pretty much all the games we dropped points. We just were not taking our chances. And this whole year... 2021 under, you know, playing playing at Anfield, we've had so many shots and we've literally scored like I swear we've literally scored like three goals. It's so poor, it really is. And and I'm not I'm sorry to say I don't want any of the front three to be scapegoated. They all need to take responsibility. Uh, just because Salah's got 28 goals this season doesn't mean he's not at fault for a lot of the times we've dropped points. It's a fact. This guy is not clinical at all. He's a great finisher sometimes, but it's just not. He's just not clinical and he had three, I'm in my opinion, he missed three sitters. And it's not, I'm not just talking about other games. I'm, talking about, I'm not just talking about yesterday's game. Other games when Salah plays, he just doesn't know how to finish his chances. So it's all good at critiquing Mane because he apparently loses the ball. But if Salah's meant to be our, our primary target in scoring goals, this guy should have should be about 10 goals, 10 goals more this season. I'm sorry. You know, I think I I think if we're going to talk about the front three, you talk about them as a collective, and uh, and I think Salah's role is is pretty much to score the goals. Mane and Firmino take more of a creative role. 
uh, in terms of creating chances. Salah is more of an inside forward. He occupies the penalty area spaces probably a bit more than the others. And last night, it's unacceptable, I'm sorry to say. Um, we need the number nine. I'm going to get onto the number nine argument in a bit. I think we need to go for Harry Kane. Why do we need to go for Harry Kane? Well, it speaks for itself. He's Premier League experienced. He's a world-class striker. He'd fit our system pretty well. We need a number nine. We need to adapt. We need to change how we play football. The front three don't work together anymore as well. I think when Jota plays, uh, we look more exciting. We look more of a threat. We look more of a menace. Um, Harry Kane has to come to Liverpool. Now, why? how is he going to come to Liverpool if we get Champions League? Are we going to get Champions League? Well, we have to get top four, obviously. And... Um, we have to win all our games. It's uh, there's no excuses anymore this season. I can't wait for it to finish. I beg that no English team wins uh, the Champions League. I don't want to see Man City or Chelsea uh, win the Champions League at all. I don't want to see Man U or Arsenal win the Europa League, but the likelihood is probably one of them will win. Uh, so that's not good. But we need to finish our season on a positive. We need to get top four. We have to win at least six out of our seven games. That's the reality. Uh, I don't understand people that think we're just going to get top four like that. It's not It's not going to be difficult. It's probably going to go down to the final game of the season. It might be in our own hands, but we'll have to see. The Leeds game is a massive game. Uh, I'm looking forward to seeing Rafinha play because I think he's someone we should go for. But obviously, I don't, obviously I don't want him to have a good game against us. Uh, that's another topic. Now... Um, yeah, so just going back to the Real Madrid game, um, they if you if you look at both legs, like there's no way they were that much better than us. So we, we didn't finish our chances. Uh, the kind of game petered out in the last twenty or thirty minutes or so, and um, yeah, look, it, it was disappointing. But to be honest, uh, it was kind of expected. Obviously, a lot of people are, are correct in saying. Uh, we lost the tie in the first half of the first leg and uh, the manner in which we conceded those goals were very, very poor. Alisson should have done better for their third goal. The tr Trent's mistake in, in the, for the second and uh, I believe Vinicius going behind that Phillips too easily now. It's just disappointing, but it shows football is a, is a game of moments and you've got to be on top of your mind and on top of the game uh, 100% of the time throughout the entire game. And um, <clears throat> it seems like Real Madrid were, were doing that. Defensively rigid, uh, industrious and efficient in midfield, and uh, they were clinical up front. And uh, it's you know Liverpool need to step up a level next season. Well, we need to step up a level now. We have to win at least five or six out of these next top uh, Premier League games. And uh, yeah, look, it it's been a very very difficult season with obviously our injuries and uh, obviously what happened at the beginning of the season with terrible VAR decisions and terrible refereeing decisions and the injuries have been shocking and there's no excuses for the dropping points at home but Liverpool need to adapt we need to find new ways of playing football to be honest uh, we need some system changes we need to be a bit more flexible we need to learn how to break down teams that operate with a low block uh, we need to improve our clinical edge uh, we need to ensure that we get rid of the right players and bring in the right players you know I never like to see any Liverpool player go but obviously there's no time for sentimental business you've got you've got to bring in the right players and get rid of the the ones that, 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 that probably have to uh they probably aren't right anymore they, they probably need uh first team football elsewhere and uh, if they're not good enough for Liverpool then it is what it is uh it's a shame but uh it's 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 the business and obviously I think it's an integral transfer window because Man City and Chelsea and Man United with all their oil money with all the money in the world obviously they're gonna probably get whoever they want like it is quickly and get ready for the new season and probably go again we need to i don't want to this next season cannot we cannot start the season with this whole type of yes we're recovering from last season it's going to take some time yes new changes new signings new system none of this bollocks i wanted to see liverpool go from the start next season and we have to be in the champions league for several reasons why because it helps us attract different players it gives us better revenue streams from you know uh coverage and viewers and uh just there's more money in the champions league in general and obviously uh it's important for our status liverpool football club we just won the champions league in 2019 we won the premier league in 2020 it's not good for our image playing in the crap Europa League uh, on on uh, Thursday nights. And, uh, it genuinely will be unbearable. Now, I think uh, I'd love to see us sign Harry Kane. He is the most important. I think he's an incredible player. If we get Champions League, though, I think there's no excuse for not signing Harry Kane. I'm sorry to say Harry Kane belongs at Liverpool Football Club next season. 
Uh, he knows a lot of the players already. He's Premier League experienced. He's chasing Shearer's record. Liverpool, the culture around Liverpool, I think Harry Kane will fit into that very well. You know, Harry Kane is a hard-working uh, um, player. He's, he's, he's done an incredible uh, job for Spurs over the few years and, and he'll settle in uh, to Liverpool. He's a disciplined player and that's the culture that Klopp has instilled around Liverpool for the several years. Uh, discipline and hard work and non, you know, fighting towards the end and all this stuff, which is we, which we've seen has been very successful. Uh, but we have to make sure we get Champions League and I think FSG need to, if they don't have their own money, they need to free up the funds to buy Harry Kane because I think that Liverpool, we need to be in the conversation. Otherwise, we'll, we'll be out-competed by Manchester United to Chelsea City. If they can sign better players than us, if they can you know, get past the recovery and rebuilding stage with all their money, then they, they, will, out they, will, they will do better than us. And look, they... <sighs> They're in the final, City probably, Chelsea semi-final, they're in the FA Cup. They do well in these competitions, they go deep. I want to see Liverpool do that because that's where we belong, our history, the size of our club. This has been a shocking season. We've crashed out of the FA Cup, we've crashed out of the Carabao Cup, we've crashed out of the Champions League, we've crashed out in the top four. It's a terrible season. It's not, people need to get real. This season has been shocking. We can leave it positive, but Liverpool need to be competing again next season 100%. And even still, even still, like... We've done terribly in the FA Cup and Carabao Cup. We need to start winning these domestic trophies. Like, come on. There is no excuses. With some of the quality players that we have, Van Dijk will be back. Gomez will be back. We need to buy the right players, get rid of the right players, and just go again. Now, obviously, I've gone on for a while, but uh, there's lots to say. I haven't done a review for a while. So, um, yeah. Um, the Leeds game is massive. we just got to win next few games and uh, I'm looking forward to seeing Liverpool play even though we, we may or may not win but I always love seeing Liverpool play so yeah disappointing to crash out to Real Madrid in the manner we did we weren't clinical so this basically sums up our season um, gifted away the goals in the first leg like we have done pretty much the whole season in the Premier League um, obviously remember that was still a foul on Stadio Mane for one of their goals but obviously that wasn't given because nothing tends to be given um, to Liverpool via the, via the referees this season, but yeah, of the Reds, come on the boys, um, we need to beat Leeds, it's as simple as that, and then we play Newcastle and Manchester United away, I, I believe they can do it, I believe they can do it, it's going to be a struggle, because we have a defence that probably still isn't strong enough, sturdy enough, I think Nat Phillips is an incredible player, I think I want to keep him as a squad player, but Ozan Kabak for me is not good enough, uh, he's too dodgy, and I don't, like, just because he passes the ball forward or passes a straight sideways pass or wins a header or does that, doesn't make him good enough. You saw so many times in the Real Madrid game, they sit back, yeah? They sit back and it opens up the space for the defenders to drive in. They don't drive and exploit the space. They just pass it to Robbo or pass it to Trent. There's, there's, the defenders are here and then there's so much space for them to drive into and open it up and be creative. That's what Van Dijk and Gomez do so well. But Odan Kabak and Phillips don't do that. Phillips has to stay because he's an incredible squad player. He's a very, very good uh, defender in the air. Strong, dominant. I, I think he's a bit of a leader as well. An underrated leader. Um, but we need to sign properly. But yeah, I've gone on for a bit too much. But come on, the boys. We need to uh, get this Champions League. And uh, yeah, get back to winning ways in the Premier League. Continue our Premier League run. And yeah, come on, the boys. Come on, the Reds. Please get that Champions League. Come on, the Reds.